everybody and welcome to my channel Casually Stick. So this is uh, the second part of the gift haul. As you noticed I didn't do an intro for this one other than the standard uh, bit that says Casually Stick across, across the screen. Um, so I'm just going to crack straight on in. Um, so um, this is uh, my friend that Kefal bought me quite a few things because she knows how important crafting is to me. So this is another one of the things that she bought me. Um, I'll show you the leaflet that came with it first. So it's actually uh, Knit Pro Nova Metal uh, Deluxe Set and it's uh, interchangeable needles. So that's that's the set. Um, some of it is in foreign language along here. Um, but I'll give you a rough idea. I haven't actually used these yet so I don't know um, what these are going to be like. Um, I wanted some interchangeable uh, knitting needles. I didn't have any. Um, so... First of all, it comes in this plastic pouch. Um, it does have slots for the needles to go in uh, on both sides. They have it all the way along. And then it's just obviously open in the middle. Now, I won't be putting my needles in the slots and here's why. Here are the needles. A bit of glare, sorry, I've had to put my craft light on because it's been snowing um, here today, so it's been quite a dull day. Now, um, I don't know see if I can move these two down. So if you look here, when the camera decides to focus, if I hide. Um, well here, it's not really focusing unfortunately. There we go. Um, right here it tells you what size number it is and what millimetres it is and it does that right the way across the card. On the actual needles themselves, these are the needles. So this is the three and a half millimeter. See, that's the end you screw into. So it's the bit you knit with. There actually doesn't say anywhere on the needle whatsoever what size it is. So unless you've got a size guide to obviously check them, um, you wouldn't actually know what size needles they were. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to keep mine in the cardboard because at least it tells me along across the top what they are. Um, I don't know if anyone else has had these and has found the, the same issue. Um, so far, I haven't, like I said, I haven't tried them. That's the only criticism I've got. Um, I've got a lot of Knit Pro products in various forms. I've got blocking mats and things like that. i um, never had a problem with them. Um, so this, the, to be honest, is the only criticism I can find so far, but I haven't actually tried attaching the cables or anything yet. Um, so that's the set of needles. Um, they range from, uh, they've got three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven and eight millimetres. So it's quite a good range there. And um, it does come with a little uh, sort of instruction leaflet on how to fit it all together and stuff I won't I won't bore you with that I haven't actually tried it yet so I don't know myself so obviously you've got got your bits and pieces and you've got your key in there as well um, it does come with a little uh, popper pouch as well um, which I presume is to put the actual cables in and then the cables have all come there's four cables and it's got a key um, the bit you obviously the cable you screw into the stopper and so on. So I've got a red one, sort of a neon green, uh, you know, yellowy green. Yeah, I suppose I don't know if you call it yellow or green, it's kind of that neon, very bright colour. And then I have um, two orange cables. The orange cables are both the same length. And this is where I need this because it does actually say. So. They, call, they do actually call this neon green. That That is the shortest cable. That is 60 centimetres. Um, the two orange ones are both the same size and they are both 80 centimetre cables. And the red one is the largest one and that is a 100 centimetres. So obviously that's quite a long cable. Um, just enables me to do some bigger projects. Um, I did The reason I've gone for these is... Um, not this particular brand, it's just one that I thought I would try. Um, <coughs> but I um, did try and do, um lady does Craftanoon Treats, and I can't remember the name of Catherine, I think it is. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Catherine. Um, very early on in her podcast, um, she did um, a liner shawl, um, which looked really good. Most of it was predominantly garter stitch. I don't really like pearl stitch. I can do it, um, but I'm much more of a garter girl. And I was in a knitting mood, which doesn't happen very often. Um, and I started the liner shawl. Um, I had two issues. I only had one ball of 100 gram ball. Um, it was in the Mariner Mermaid yard. Yard? Yard? Yarn. Um, and... Uh, so I really needed two balls of that and I only had one so that would have messed me up anyway but the needles I was working with straight needles they were about so long and I just couldn't fit any more stitches on and of course it was one of those projects that progressively gets bigger um, so I, I I haven't actually shown that on camera yet I'm, I may do but I can't remember the yarn colour I got rid of the label I did that when I was having my break from YouTube um, so I may show that at some point in the future, but um, that's why I wanted to get circular needles and interchangeables so that I could, if I wanted to do it, I mean, I may try the liner shawl again with more yarn and obviously with, with a lot bigger needles now um, and try again. So that, that's the reason why I went for interchangeable and circulars um, because I do have straight needles, but obviously you can only fit so many stitches on, can't you? So, so that's why I've gone for those. So... I have to let you know what I think of them when I try them, but I haven't actually tried them as yet. I've got so many crochet projects on the go. I was a bit worried about starting another knitting one <laughs> as well. I'm trying not to start any more. I'm trying to. <sighs> she says, and I still haven't tied the ends in on the on the uh, scrap gown either. <laughs> so, wishful thinking. Um, right now, I've got um, three books. So I'll show you one. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to break break it up in the book. So. Um, this book actually arrived today, um, my dad actually ordered it for my birthday but it took a week to be dispatched so this has actually arrived this morning. Um, it's a fairly new book, um, I know it's uh, published in 2017 so obviously it's fairly new on the market. So it's Freeform Crochet, if it wants to focus, there we go, and it's by um, Carol, Carol Mad, I'm trying to read backwards, it's not good, Ma Carol Meldrum. And it's freeform crochet with confidence. Unlock the secrets of patchwork spirals laced with 30 freeform crochet projects. Um, so um, in this book, I'm not going to do a whole book review because obviously that would be a whole video in itself. Um, but it does, it tells you about different yarns. Um, it's got, I won't worry about showing that too much, it's just about how to make stitches. So you know, your double crochet, triple crochets, all that kind of stuff. Texture stitch, so it goes all through the stitches, like bubble stitch, popcorn stitch, all that kind of pico. Um, and then it goes into shapes and spirals and how to colour. Um, and then just gradually works into free form. So, so for instance, uh, that is one project. So as you can see, it's not working in straight rows. Um... Some of the projects are really lovely, like, I, I really like those, they're fingerless um, gloves. Um, some of the projects in here are a bit weird. Most of them are quite nice, there's some tops, um, there's all sorts of different things. Um, that, <laughs> I'm not too sure about that one. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's supposed to look like a cupcake or something, but... Uh, my friend that I care for, she actually said it looked like um, something you would put on top of a clown. <laughs> um, so some of the projects are a bit weird. Um, I like the colours on that, not sure about the texture. But again, it's all going to be, so there's there's um, quite a few patterns in here. Some of them are quite pretty, that's a cup cosy. So um, I'm not going to go through the whole book. Um, um, in the UK, um, it's priced as 10 99 on the back, so... Um, I will let you know I, what I think, obviously, as I, as and when I try it. Um, if you'd like a full book review, then that's fine. Um, just let me know. But uh, yeah, so this is this is a, a fairly new one on the market. Um, the reason I decided to go for this was, um, as you know, one of my craft goals was um, to um, write my own pattern. My brain's really not working today. Um, <coughs> So I thought by learning a bit free from crochet that might loosen me up and, and take me away from 
you know very solid written patterns which is nothing wrong but I want to learn to kind of let loose a little bit more if that makes sense right well, I'm going to crack on because I'm waffling I'm already at 10 minutes so the next thing is this is the last lot of yarn so this is um boho uh, spirits by signet um the color code I've got 10 of these um I've used one and I'm using the second one at the minute so it was a full pack when I had it um, the colour code is 6385, I think it's called Chic. Um, so it has silvers, um, different browns in it, it has this beautiful sort of purple and sort of this sort of tealy blue colour. Um, by luck, more than anything, um, this actually happens to be the same dye lot that I started my virus blanket in. So actually I will be able to complete that, that's uh, why my friend bought this for me. Um, it's the same dye light. Chances of that, especially when you're ordering online. Um, so, so obviously it's like, hallelujah. So, <laughs> um, so I really love, have loved using this yarn. And here I will say about by her spirit, and I don't know if anyone else has found, um, the width of the yarn does vary. It goes from sort of thinner to quite thick in places. Um, I quite like that because it gives you more of a textured look. But obviously if you, you know, that's not your thing, then obviously you probably wouldn't like it. But it is nice yarn it's not easy to unravel that's the only thing and the only other thing I will say is I like to pull from the center of my balls not from the outside I don't like balls rolling all over the place and um, so I do center pull when I'm working um, with any kind of yarn whether that be marino this or any other yarns um, you get a lot of yarn vomit with these you know you get a big old clump of it uh, marina is bad for that as well um, it never used to be but just recently has been so um, but that's the only downside is you get your vomit if you put centre pull, but it's done a placenta pull, it's just that I like to do it, so you know, I'm awkward like that. Um, so yeah, so I got 10 balls of that, so um, that should be plenty to complete my blanket. Um, obviously it works out as quite an expensive blanket, but um, it is something that's for me that I will keep forever. Um, I don't make sort of things like that for myself, I've never made a blanket for myself, it's always been for other people, so this is... You know it's a big deal for me it's part of my self-care with my depression so um yeah so that's why i'm doing it so uh i wish I, I can at least finish that forest blanket so obviously you will see the complete forest blanket in a video to come don't know when because well quite a way to go <laughs> it's got quite big but it's a long way to go okay so the next thing is a craft bag um many of you may recognize this um this came from amazon um it's by groves hobby gift um i know they do quite a big range um i have a lot of these owl ones and i've been slowly building up my collection um so this bag's quite good it's particularly good if you're a knitter i think but it's just a big big bag um it's good for sort of medium-sized products it has a zip at the front here so obviously good for hooks and really good for knitting needles as well and the best bit for those of you that like it, I don't know if you can see that but it's got a, an eyelet there um, to feed your yarn through so you can obviously take it out with you um, yeah zip up bag carry handle so it's pretty you know box standard bag really but it matches my collection um, the only th only downside I had to this was when it arrived it was wrapped in plastic um, but there was a slit in the side of the plastic and, and sort of whatever company it came from it was from Amazon um, somebody smoked very heavily so it absolutely reeked um, and it's got cardboard in the base part here so you can't actually put it in the washing machine so I've been Febrezing it but it still smells a little bit so I've got a bit more Febrezing to do but it's a lot better than it was because it really was quite overpowering so <laughs> that was the only downside to it but I absolutely love it I'm really chuffed with it and the last two um, things are books um, my friend bought me both of these I think yeah yes yes she did she bought me both of these so the first one um, they're both by the same person I think yes so the books are by Vanessa Munchi that's her name there and uh, so this one is crocheted wild animals um, now on uh, Sean's Crafty Corner she has a Facebook group um, which I'm a member of and there is a lady called Lucy and uh, I'm not going to say her name because obviously you know she might not want it out there 
Um, but Lucy shared um, a project she'd actually done from this book, which I will show you. If I can find the page. I should have really found the page before I started recording, but there we go. So, I'm trying to do it without giving any pattern away. So, she made this really cute little frog. Um, and I really love that. And I, um, as many of you know, that I'm doing, um, I do a lot of work for Willy Hugs. Um, I have had a brief sort of break from it, um, sort of in January, just, you know, because you need to recharge your batteries and stuff. Um, but Lucy kind of inspired me and I, I said to my friend, I'd really like to get that book. Um, a, because when you've got a book, you've got the pattern permanently. Um, and there were just loads and loads of lovely, lovely animals in here. Now, Willy Hugs are doing a project um, that is uh, for children in Belarus um, that are, are sort of victims of the Chernobyl disaster. Um, so a lot of these children have had cancer and stuff like that. Um, or are dealing with it. Um, so they want um, stuffed toys, um, obviously handmade toys, and they, I think they can't be any more than 25 centimetres tall, and I think that's just for shipping purposes to keep costs down for the, for the charity. Um, but they want toys for the children for Christmas. So one of the things, apart from, you know, the normal hats and scarves, blankets and kinds of things that I'll, I'll be doing through the course of the year, is I will be making a lot of toys. Um, you know, it will probably be fits and starts. Obviously, you, you know what it's like when you're crafting. You've got to go with where your mood takes you and what you feel like doing. Um, but that is something that I'm planning to do. And the first thing I do plan to do, and it's all Lucy's fault, I'm blaming you, is I'm going to do the frog. And I will probably be doing that with um, the sort of minty green yarn that uh, Kim, for, which is Blue Cherub 82, um, Kim sent me, which obviously I put in a recent video, um, which was the, the yarn that... Um, we thought was Chinese or not um, but it, we couldn't read the labels because it was obviously in hieroglyphics so um, I'll probably be using that and then probably some of the, the baby uh, light green with it as well so I'll be doing the frog first out of the book that's the plan um, there are um, there's also um, so these are some of the so you've got um, a monkey there's a red deer um, a rabbit a lion elephant polar bear I think that's supposed to be a fox a giraffe and i was thinking with the giraffe um i don't know if you remember jan sent me some yarn um that was bright yellow and i thought i might be able to get away with maybe making the giraffe out of some of that um so that's the plan and there's also um there's a camel there i'm trying to do it without showing any patterns so i'm trying to do it from the front of the book Oh, you've got like a film strip bit that's quite good so here's some of that so there's a chameleon in the back you've got flamingo um, there is an owl, which I think is what that, that one there is. Um, lion, there's a frog. Uh, oh yes, there's a snake in it as well. Um, so there's all sorts of, I do like the elephant, the elephant's on the front. Um, I really love the elephant. It is a bit bigger than what H Willy Hugs want, so I've got to think about that and maybe contact them and say I could make it, but you know, is it going to be too big? Um, they've got the owl on the back so that's what the owl looks like so there's lots of different characters there which um, I'm really quite looking forward to doing and the one thing I will say is that it has got charts in it as well so if you uh, can't read patterns but you can read charts um, I do recommend it because it does have both um, and as you know I'm not a very good chart reader so it's going to help improve my skill set as well so the second book um, again by the same lady which is Vanessa Munchie and this is crocheted sea creatures. Um, so as you can see, one of them is a shark. <coughs> I'll show you on the back. Um, you've got a whale, seahorse, um, and this guy here is an anglerfish. And I've actually, these are very rare uh, because they come from the deepest part of the oceans and I have actually seen one in real life. Um, so, also have, um, there's a puffer fish. There's jellyfishes, which I thought looked really quite cool. I thought they'd be quite cool in the mobile, actually, hanging from a ceiling. Um, and some of the pictures, you've got starfish. Um, I know there's a lobster in there. There's also a hermit crab. Um, there's an octopus, which you've got here. Um, 
yeah there's all sorts um let's see if i can oh they've got more pictures in the front of this one so that's a little bit easier to show you so i don't know i can't remember what that thing's called but it's almost classed as a fossil apparently um starfish hermit crab jellyfish the starfish and the whale jellyfish and the shark it's nice when they're pictures at the front because you can do it without worrying about getting copyrighted uh puffer fish and the lobster i thought the lobster looks quite cool something different sea urchins and uh I think that's the hermit crab. Yes, hermit crab. We've got the uh, seahorses and the octopus. The octopus, I don't know if he'll be too big, but I quite like the look of him. And um, I don't know if you can see, but underneath, it's actually got all like the little sucker bits um, crocheted on as well. So I thought that was really quite cool. Um, the anglerfish and um, uh, it's called a nautilus. Maybe one of you can enlighten me what that is. And that's it so again it's the same same uh, principle it has got charts in it um, it's very clearly written um, obviously haven't made anything yet um, but I do recommend it um, I do know that this lady has done other books um, which I can show you there so she's got knitted uh, woodland creatures is one of them um, and I think it's in the back of the other one let's have a look she's also done knitted dinosaurs I don't know if that's going to focus. Um, and knitted farm animals. So she has done, if you're into your knitting, um, she has done other books. Um, and going by how the crochet ones are, I have to say, pretty impressed. Um, I would definitely be using those. And I thought it'd be good to make um, toys for children that aren't just teddy bears and dolls, you know. Not every kid wants that. I mean, when I was growing up, um, and my mum will vouch for this, I hated dolls. I just wasn't a doll kid at all. I'd have much rather had a toy dog or a toy elephant or whatever um, than I would have a doll. I just wasn't interested in dolls at all. Um, so um, I think that would be good because obviously you're going to be catering for boys as well as girls. So, um, you know, and everybody loves animals. So if I pick and choose the right ones, I think, you know, things like the elephant, the rabbit and stuff like that, uh, you know, frogs would be good for boys you know so stuff like that so I think that's going to be quite interesting um I think about making the anglerfish for myself just as a memory um so I actually saw that um the Natural History Museum down in London um it's a free museum you can go to they have a, an area called the Darwin Centre um and one of the curators um uh, takes you on a tour you have to sign up you have to go in and you have to put your name on a list you have to wait because um, it's quite busy but you do eventually get taken around in small groups by a curator and every curator um, basically deals with a separate um, sub subject so um, some of them will, will be uh, in insect experts I'm very glad I didn't get that because I'm terrified of spiders <laughs> um, the one that we had um, happened to specialise in fish and obviously marine animals so uh, we got taken around by that and by chance when we went down to the basement where they have big vats um, where you're not really supposed to see what's in them because they're obviously larger animals. Um, these are all things that have been collected as part of Dar either by Darwin himself. Um, I did see some of the jars that he'd labelled with some of the creatures he'd found and some of them are ones that obviously have been added to the collection in years since. I don't wholeheartedly agree with killing animals for the sake of keeping them in jars but i do understand the scientific and learning value so it's a bit of a that's a whole other debate isn't it um but when we went down into to this particular room uh one of the scientists was working and he happened to be working um and sort of examining an anglerfish and actually we were allowed to go and look um it's quite big it's about, about so big it's quite a big fish um very ugly looking um, quite remarkable when you think it's down from the deepest depths of the ocean um, so I may make that one for me um, so yeah so uh, that's one of my weird little things that I've done in my life but, mm. <laughs> um, it was a very long time ago but uh, yeah so it's nice to have something different I think uh, you know all the dogs and cats and bears and all the world are, are great but I like to do something a little bit different so 
Um, so that's it. Um, I hope that's inspired you a bit. Um, if you want me to go more into the books with reviews, then that's fine. Obviously, I will do that once obviously I've started working on them and you know got more of an opinion, particularly with a free form um, crochet one. But um, I hope that's given you some inspiration, um, and I hope that you've enjoyed that. Um, I just want to be clear. I'm not doing it to brag. It's just it's nice to share things. You know, you know somebody might tell me the needles I've got crap. But I don't know. <laughs> you know, and it, but it might be that you know I like the needles and I can give a good review on it. So um, it's nice. I, I think it's good to to show things that you've got um, because it gives people other people ideas. So um, I hope that has inspired you a bit. Um, so that's it for today. I'm sorry if I've waffled on. I think it's just like you know not feeling 100%. Brain's just like mush. <laughs> um, this is quite a long video. So it's going to take quite a while to upload. So I'm hoping I'll get it up either Saturday or Sunday fingers crossed depending on how quickly it uploads um, so that's it I don't know what the next video will be so <laughs> you're in, I'm in as much of the dark as you are um, but I will try and do an upload uh, obviously get back into my normal schedule next week now things have calmed down a little bit and um, so I hope you're well how are you doing what are you working on um, don't forget to let me know what you think of having a Facebook group and uh, just remember to stay well so important this time of year. Happy crafting and remember to stay true to yourself. Bye.